Now it's our Miss Brooks starring Eve Arden. A couple of times a year, our Miss Brooks, who teaches English at Madison High School, is obliged to invite her principal and his wife over for dinner. On these occasions, the fact that she's extremely fond of Mrs. Conklin and feels rather differently about her principal presents a problem. Yes. How to sprinkle ground glass in the food without getting them both. <laughs> I was expecting the Conklins and Mr. Boynton for dinner last Thursday evening, but much to my surprise, Mrs. Conklin came over as I was finishing breakfast that morning. Good morning, mister. Why, Mrs. Conklin, aren't you a little early? Dinner won't be ready for 11 hours yet. <laughs> oh, it's nothing like that. I had to see you before you went to school today. It, well, it, oh, Miss Brooks, ever since you mentioned that beaver stole to me 10 days ago, I've decided I wanted it for Christmas more than I've wanted anything for a long time. Well, I think you should have it, Mrs. Conklin. And so do I. After being married to Osgood for 20 years, I think I deserve a fur piece. After being married to Osgood for 20 years, you deserve the Brooklyn Bridge. <laughs> you certainly do. Well, in the last 10 days, I've tried everything to get it. However, the day before yesterday, I hit upon the perfect solution to my entire problem. But I'm going to need your help. I simply want you to give this special delivery letter to Osgood. It came after he left the house this morning. That's all you want me to do? Certainly. The contents of this letter from his cousin really ought to do the trick. But how do you know the contents? I wrote it. <laughs> you wrote it? Why, I had no idea you were his cousin, too. <laughs> oh, Miss Brooks, Mr. Conklin's cousin is in on this little hoax of me. She sent this letter from Cedarville, where we were married. You see... I asked myself, when was the only time Osgood ever gave me everything I wanted? Then I remembered it was when he was courting me. So I decided to have him court me all over again. But how are you going to manage that? Well, I got the idea from a movie I saw a few years ago. You see, this letter says that recently it was discovered that the justice of the peace who married us had done so without a license. So technically we're not married. Of course... Osgood will try to remarry me, and that's when I have him over a barrel. I see. Well, it sounds fine, but there might be one possible catch. What's that, Miss Brooks? He might enjoy being over the barrel so much you might never get him off. <laughs> I think a first soul is asking for so much. After all, Mother has worked and slaved for us both all these years. Well, you have no idea the hardship she's had to endure. As soon as I get home, remind me to unstrap her from in front of the plow. <laughs> Harry, your mother doesn't know the meaning of the word work. Apparently, all she knows is how to ask for things. Oh, but Daddy, sure. No sooner does she learn I'm making $300 extra by going on a lecture tour for Mr. Stone than she wants a first show. Now, if you'll excuse me, Harriet, I can't think of anyone I'd rather converse with less at the moment. Who is it? Miss Brooks, sir. I spoke too soon. <laughs> to my inner office, please, Harriet. But, Daddy, can't I wait? Vamoose, Vixen. Oh, my. All right. <laughs> Come in, Miss Brooks. Good morning, Mr. Conklin. Uh, what is it, Miss Brooks? Please be as brief as possible. As you can see, I have a desk piled high with papers. Uh, yes, sir. Those crossword puzzles do pile up if you don't get... <laughs> uh, I have a letter for you, sir. Your wife called and asked me if I'd drop it off. She thought it might be important. It's from your cousin in Cedarville. Oh, uh, uh, special delivery. Mark Urgent. Goodness, I haven't heard from my cousin in five years. The last time she wrote me, her letter contained extremely bad news. Mr. Oh, I dread reading it. Well, might as well get it over with. Oh, dear, good. Must be terrible news, huh? Awful news. <laughs> Simply dreadful, huh? Horrible? I had 
have no idea the news could be that bad. Miss Brooks, I'm not married. <laughs> That's terrible, sir. Simply terrible. What happened? Well, it seems there was a little mistake about my marriage, Miss Brooks. A remarkable little mistake. It seems the justice of the peace who married us wasn't really a justice of the peace at all. Then who was he? The best friend a man ever had. <laughs> I'm dead. Oh, but, sir, this is dreadful. Simply dreadful. After all these years. Well, you must remarry at once. But who? <laughs> I'm Mrs. Conklin. That's who. Oh, it's great to be single. My pockets will jingle in the dee 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 <laughs> Miss Brooks, I feel like a bird who's just been let out of his cage. A convict who has just been released from jail. Oh, if Mr. Boynton's anywhere around, I'm cooked. Uh, then I suppose you and Mrs. Conklin won't be coming over for dinner tonight. I and Martha Flyshacker will be delighted. <laughs> we'll be delighted to come for dinner. Martha Flyshacker? My wife's maiden name. <laughs> no wonder she changed it to Conklin. Then you are coming over, sir? Oh, certainly, certainly. I can't wait to get together with Boynton and discuss the good old single life. <laughs> well, if you must discuss it, Mr. Conklin, at least don't do it in the presence of Mrs. Davis. Why not, Miss Brooks? The way things stand now, she's the only one left who might marry me. <laughs> Well, Mrs. Conklin hopes to convince our principal that they were never really married and thereby get a fur coat when he recorded her backfired rather badly. So all morning long, I did my best to keep Mr. Boynton away from our ecstatic principal. The last time I stopped him occurred as he was leaving his laboratory just before noon. Why, Mr. Boynton, where are you going with those rabbit cages this time of day? Well, I didn't think you'd mind if I took my rabbits, Henry and George, to lunch with us, Miss Brooks. Not at all, Mr. Boynton. Maybe one of them will pick up the check. <laughs> it uh, will certainly save me a trip. Otherwise, I'd have to come all the way back here with them after I see Mr. Conklin. After you see Mr. Conklin? Uh, yes. Uh, I want him to see the condition these cages are in. The only way I can persuade him to give me the money for some new ones. Oh, well, today's the wrong day for that. You said that to me twice before today, uh, about two other things. <laughs> it almost seems as if you don't want me to see him. Oh, now, Mr. Boynton, wherever did you get such a fantastically accurate, uh, fantastic idea? <laughs> why shouldn't I want you to see him? Oh, I don't know why. The few times I did catch sight of him today, he seemed excited and happy about something. I wonder what it is. Oh, well, I'll, I'll probably find out about it when I see him at your house tonight. Tonight? Hmm. Oh, I, I knew there was something I had to tell you, Mr. Boynton. The dinner for tonight has been canceled. Uh, Mrs. Davis is very ill. Oh, I'm terribly sorry, Miss Brooks. Must have come on quite suddenly. Uh, what is it, flu? A uh, virus? Uh, bronchitis? That's right. Which one is it? Take your pick. <laughs> um, it, it's the flu, Mr. Boynton. So, of course, we won't be able to make it, but any other night would be oh, just fine. Right. Hi, Mr. Boynton. Oh, hello, Walter. Boy, wait till you hear the latest about old Marblehead. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Conklin. He's declared tomorrow a half holiday and commissioned one of the kids to go out and buy up all the fireworks he can find. Everyone thinks that Mr. Conklin's finally snapped his cap. <laughs> you mean he's crazy? Yeah, as screwy as a hopped-up cucaracha and a bowl of hot chili. <laughs> Oh, oh, by the way, Miss Brooks, Harriet told me if I ran into you that Mr. Conklin wanted to see you. There's something about canceling his date with you tonight. But be careful when you go into his office. Well, perhaps I'd better go along with you, Miss Brooks, in, in case he gets violent. Oh, don't worry about me, Mr. Boynton. I have a way with violent men. And if you don't believe me, please try me sometime. <laughs> To be single, my pockets will jingle. <laughs> Principal's office, Osgood Conklin himself speaking. Over. Hello, Osgood. This is Mr. Stone. Oh, yes, Mr. Stone. How are you, sir? Conklin, I just had a thought that should make you very happy. 
How would you like to take Mrs. Conklin along on your lecture tour? Conklin? <laughs> Hello? Conklin, can you hear me? I'm afraid I can. What happened? Will you cut off? Only my windpipe. <laughs> that is, uh, I was choked with happiness. Good, good. Uh, Mr. Stone, is it absolutely essential that I take Mrs. Conklin along? I mean, yes, Mrs. Conklin, it is essential. Is your wife free to go? The sir, she's been free to go for the past 20 years. <laughs> I mean, yes, yes, of course she is. Then she goes along regardless of what. Those are orders. Uh, yes, sir, regardless of what. Goodbye, sir. Well, I was good. I guess there's no other choice. Uh, it's delightful to be merry. To be, 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 uh, Mr. Conklin, I understand you want to cancel the dinner engagement at my house. I guess you've decided to go out on the town to celebrate your newly found freedom. Freedom? Oh, oh, it's true, Miss Brooks. I did have some wild thoughts when you first handed me that letter this morning, but after a little sober reflection, there's nothing I want more than to be welcomed back into the warmth, comfort, and security of my happy little prison. Home, home. <laughs> Well, there's nothing standing in your way, is there, sir? Oh, well, frankly, there is little something. In my momentary exuberance this morning, I called my wife and said some things that may have annoyed her a teensy-weensy bit. A teensy-weensy bit. She said she'd never speak to me again. <laughs> Miss Brooks, I know you have some influence with her. I'm sure you could help me win her back. Oh, I don't know, Mr. Conklin. You know what they say about a woman scorned? Only a beaver soul can unscorn her. <laughs> a beaver soul? There's a beauty on special for only $200. You do want her back in the next few weeks, don't you? The next few weeks? I want her back at once. Not only do I love her, but Mr. Stone will cancel my lecture tour if you... Oh, I think I'm beginning to understand the urgency. I did let the cat out of the bag, didn't I, Miss Brooks? You let the cat out and the beaver in. <laughs> See you at my house at seven, sir. By seven o'clock that night at my house, we were about ready to receive Mr. Conklin. Now, do we have our signal straight, Mrs. Conklin? Well, I, I think so, Miss Brooks, but are you sure our good will come? Of course, he will, Martha. And don't worry, you'll get that beaver yet. Mrs. Conklin, would Mr. Boynton be here now if I weren't sure of your husband's attitude? Believe me, it was difficult to convince him that Mrs. Davis had recovered after I told him she had the flu earlier today. Oh, that explains it. I was wondering why he came in wearing a gauze mask before he... Now, now do you feel a little more confident, Mrs. Conklin? Well, I, I guess so. Oh, my, I wonder if Phyllis Stone is having the same trouble with Mr. Stone. Phyllis Stone? Yes, Margaret. I told her about my marriage hopes, and she's trying the same trick to get a first show from Mr. Stone. What? If this thing keeps spreading, we're all liable to wind up on Dragnet next week. <laughs> now, if, if... Oh, oh, goodness. That must be Osgood now. Remember what I told you. Play hard to get. Uh, Mrs. Davis, would you mind going into the kitchen and sending in Mr. Boynton? I want him to be a witness to Love's old sweet song. All right, dear. And in the meantime, I'll finish preparing dinner. Now, we'll be right back, Mrs. Conklin. Good evening, Miss Brooks. Why, Mr. Beaver. Uh, Mr. Conklin. <laughs> Come in, sir. Now, then, where is she, Miss Brooks? Where is my lovely, blushing child bride? <laughs> Never mind. I, I know where she is. Hello, Osgood. Poopsie girl. <laughs>